This is the state of Colorado. The state of Colorado is a spontaneous discussion of the issues. Funding for the state of Colorado is provided by the Adolph Coors Foundation, the Monfort Family Foundation, and public service companies Wind Source, bringing wind energy to Colorado. Now, Don Kinney. Good evening. Colorado's flight controllers have their spacecraft in orbit around Mars. Science reporter Joe Varengia. Now the Waterton Canyon experts will gradually fly their probe deeper into the Mars atmosphere. Colorado's growth is part of several stories of this week. Overcrowding. And MC, too many inmates in juvenile jails. Guy Kelly, overcrowding on highways, in restaurants, and more people are coming. Promotion of Colorado across the nation is reduced. Erica Gonzalez, in rural Colorado communities, shop owners say they need more travelers. In a few minutes, medical reporter Ann Schrader will join us. Smoking among teenagers remains a medical concern. We begin, the spacecraft is under control and is controlled in Jefferson County, Joe Varengia. Mission Control has switched from NASA now to Lockheed Martin, and this is an example of privatization and the faster, cheaper, smaller way that the space agency does business. It's cheaper to run a spacecraft from here than it is from their own headquarters. And in this case, it's a Colorado spacecraft. Well, it's Colorado built, Colorado designed, Colorado polished, and Colorado transported. They did launch it from Cape Canaveral, although maybe sometime in the next century that won't even happen anymore. Joe Varengia, two successes in two months. Two for two. They have a modest winning streak to Mars now, which is, which is actually quite an achievement because Mars, more than any other planet in the solar system, has had a larger share of mishaps and disasters as far as these unmanned probes are concerned. More of them have been Russian than American, but nevertheless, as late as 1993, a a much more expensive but very similar spacecraft called Mars Observer blinked out a couple of days before orbit, never to be heard from again. This is a replacement mission for that and will do 80% of what that mission was supposed to accomplish. That earlier mission lost in 1993 was nearly a billion dollars. And now this mission, total cost, including launch and everything else, is $250 million. Uh, the actual spacecraft was much less expensive than that, so it seems as though the, the whole thing that goes on with VCRs when they first came out and they were more expensive, well, the same thing is happening with spacecraft. In this case, they use a, a likeness of throwing a baseball from Los Angeles to New York City to hit a specific window in the Empire State Building. This is an example of space engineers not only trying to make it understandable for the public, but, but actually be funny. Um, <laughs> They mix their metaphors a little bit, I think. And actually, I think they're not giving themselves enough credit either, because Mars is a moving target, as well as being a very precise target from a long way away. I'd stick with the baseball analogy and say that it's LA to New York, but instead of a window in the Empire State Building, it's home plate at Yankee Stadium, and they're throwing a guy out at the plate before he can score. That's how precise it is. And once the, the spacecraft is in its round orbit, unlike the elliptical one it's in now, it will map the entire planet. It has several different instruments on it, but probably the most important for the future, for the decade or more of exploration still to go with many more spacecraft, is the, the photo reconnaissance uh, cameras on board, which you know, have a military heritage. You know, before, we couldn't use these because the CIA owned them. Now they can go to Mars and take pictures there. And they'll be very precise. They'll be able to certainly find the other landers, including Mars Pathfinder on the surface of Mars, as well as rocks, even as small as this table. But what they really want to look for aren't necessarily the small things on Mars with this equipment. They're doing a total atlas of the planet, probably to more detail than even an atlas that we have on Earth. And it will include everything from the, the canyons on Mars that are as big as the United States itself to the 80,000-foot volcano on Mars. With the hope they will understand Martian weather and find places for humankind to arrive. Eventually humankind. That certainly hasn't been received the stamp of approval yet, but that's absolutely the direction we're going. I think probably in our lifetimes later on, 
there very well might be astronauts exploring those features. The next several missions, though, are going to be robots. And over the next few years, we'll hear a lot about efforts to see Mars because there'll be couples going up every couple of years. Couples of spacecraft, yes. which, is, which is not nearly as, uh, as exciting necessarily. <laughs> but the, uh, well, the, 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 the theme at, uh, at Martin now is embrace space. Which is, which is a little sensual for what I thought the company would ever do. And no one it dared utter that on camera last night. They were supposed to cheer and brace face when, the, when everything happened, but they didn't. Science reporter Joe Varengia of the Rocky Mountain News. Several topics about overcrowding. And MC did a story at midweek about overcrowding in juvenile detention centers across the state. What a flurry of reaction. It was pretty surprising to see a group like Human Rights Watch take a look at Colorado prisons. Usually they're looking at dictatorships around the world and human rights abuses. But in this case, they looked at Colorado's prisons for kids, and they found a lot wrong. They said kids, if they're dangerous, they're dirty, uh, and that kids are just plain unsafe. And they blamed the problem on overcrowding. And then within 24 hours, the reaction was, ah, oh, but that was one year ago. Well, it was one year ago, and we've spent $45 million trying to resolve this problem, but they admitted we have not resolved the problems entirely. They've made progress, but the facilities are still overcrowded, and we keep getting more and more young criminals, and they keep overwhelming the system. In some cases, as many as four young people in the space built for one. Uh, one person described it as head to toe on mattresses on the floor, just jamming every space. And this is what, when it really causes a problem is when you start talking about treatment or safety. If you've got one staffer looking over 40 people, they can't possibly keep the kids from assaulting each other. They can't possibly do any kind of reasonable uh, mental health or counseling treatment. And uh, the other really amazing thing was food. Over and over and over again at six of the eight facilities, kids said they were going hungry in Colorado prisons. And you were told they were receiving at least 3,300 calories a day. That's according to federal guidelines. So the Colorado facilities say, hey, we're, we're feeding them enough. But if anybody around here has a teenager, you know, 17 year olds can stand in front of a refrigerator and just inhale food. So it's not so surprising that if you don't feed them what they want, they're going to be hungry. And Joe Varengia? The public sentiment for prisons in this state, in most states now, seems to be uh, less towards rehabilitation, certainly, and if we're warehousing adult criminals, then that's what they deserve. But it would seem that the children and, and teenagers might still have a chance to be rehabilitated, or has, has that, as a policy, gone out the window with these, with these jails? Colorado officials say it hasn't, but the Human Rights Watch people really got that impression. Uh, because they said that Colorado is funding buildings, but they're not funding enough for mental health care, treatment, for education. They found one uh, facility, Mount View, where kids weren't going to school. Did it, now, the last thing you'd want is to pull uh, you know, juvenile delinquents out of school. Did the analysts then make any predictions or statements about, about the likelihood of these kids staying criminals because of the partly because of the experience they had? Well, perhaps more importantly, these kids are coming out they're not going into prison for the rest of their life. They're coming out in a couple of years or less. So you might as well do the best you can. The initial reaction included a lot of finger pointing toward the legislature, simply making too many young people uh, available for lockup, but then not dealing with them once they get there. That's true. Uh, the Colorado state officials said that's not really fair because we have, in fact, allocated $45 million towards this problem in the last few years, but, and that's a lot of money. But still, the, many of the serious problems that were pointed out in this uh, program, in this uh, report, were uh, treatment for mental health, real serious mental health problems like schizophrenia, and education and uh, counseling. And do you sense there's going to be a real push to react to this report, to say we are going to get more done? They're certainly embarrassed by it. Uh, this is not the kind of thing you want to have come out. Uh, about your prisons, um, and I think we'll see some changes. Uh, I don't, I'm not yet sure what, but I think there's a lot of embarrassment about it. And MC of the Rocky Mountain News will be back to Ann in just a few moments to talk about the Broncos. Next, overcrowding. Guy Kelly of the Rocky Mountain News on occasion takes a look at how many people are coming to your neighborhood. And there are a lot of people who feel there are too many. 
uh, it's not just the jails that are jammed these days. There's more, uh, more people across the state, certainly in the metro area, which is now at about 2.1 million. More cars on the highways, which most people uh, get a daily dose of. More kids in school more of everything and uh, a lot of people feel like they could use a little more elbow room in their Colorado lifestyles getting cramped by the population growth here. A graphic example is rush hour. It gets longer and longer. It's uh, pretty much uh, all day for the most part. There's a little bit of a, a downfall in, in the mid-afternoon but it picks up again and that's where growth intersects with people's daily lives and most people uh, list traffic uh, at the top of their concerns about growth and that's just part of a backlash that's starting to happen about the number of people that are moving here every day. Back in 1980, now we're reaching back 17 years, there were 1.3 million cars in Colorado. Now it's above 2 million. And, uh, and, and it may even be more. It's hard to get a, a handle on the actual number of cars here because, believe it or not, people come here and don't register their cars like they're supposed to. There's plenty of cars out there, and that's going to affect public policy decisions. Uh, we have elections coming up regarding spending literally billions of dollars on transportation, highways, light rail, and things that are going to affect people's lives and the way people get around in this area for a long time to come. So it is having a huge effect and will continue to have an effect on lives here. And Colorado is the fourth fastest growing state in the nation. Yeah, the, the western states are, are the biggest. Uh, Denver is now about the 20th largest metro area, booming all the time from the foothills out to the plains. Uh, sometimes it seems like every square inch of dirt is going to have a loft or a subdivision built on it. And I think people are tired of it, and you've seen initiatives on ballots to try to limit growth. But how successful those are going to be when people want to move here. There's lots of jobs. There's more people working than ever. There's lots of money in this state and people still want to live in Colorado. Well, it, that's a key. The, the number of people looking for a job is as a record low, and we also have the most employed in the state's history. Yeah, well, we have uh, a lot of traffic for the same reason we have four big league teams. There's lots of money and lots of people in the state, and things are going very well. It's hard to remember that just a few years ago we would have killed to get businesses to come in here, but now when someone like Nike says we might build a plant in the metro area, People groan and say, God, we, we don't want another 10,000 people here. That's the last thing we need. It wasn't that long ago when we would have uh, begged someone like Nike to show up in town. The metro area is growing so rapidly, a lot of people must get away for the weekend. They go to the mountains, and who do they see? Well, good luck trying to get through the tunnel. You know, with a million people going through in July and then again in August, and those were the first two months that a million people made it. And once you get to the uh, trailhead, you've got to find a place to park, of course, and then you'll be with a bunch of people hiking up. Uh, climbing 14ers even isn't uh, a solitary experience anymore. About 50,000 people are going up and down the peaks these days. But um, it's still attractive to people and uh, I don't think we've seen anything yet. I think there's going to be more and more of that. So it's going to be something we'll have to deal with for some time to come. We will see more resistance to growth as time goes by. I think so and that's going to be an issue for politicians and the public to deal with in the future here, certainly.